going on guys? Geosnow right here. So in today's video, I'm going to talk about the iOS 10.3.2. Whatever has changed, what you need to know about the battery life, what you need to know about the features, the bug fixes, and the situation about jailbreaking. So um, I didn't want to make this video because I usually do not make videos about updates and what they contain in terms of features, but some of you asked me in the comment section how it behaves, especially on 32-bit devices. So I decided to put a, a video together so that you can see. Now I'm running currently iOS 10.3.2. I uh, do not recommend you to update if you're looking for a jailbreak, but uh, I have ac actually updated my 32-bit device on purpose because I wanted to see how it behaves on a 32-bit. So this is an iPhone 5 and it's the same situation as on the iPhone 5C. So uh, yeah, the improvements aren't really visible. Apple, what Apple did was to actually patch a couple of bugs. Now, there aren't any features in terms of, you know, new features that you can access or you can use, but there are quite a lot of uh, bug fixes in the background, and this is why you should stay away of iOS 10.3.2 if you're looking into, of course, getting a uh, jailbreak. Now, um, of course, there are a couple of them in here, and we discussed about them with a... Um, with, in, a, in another video that I made, and some of them are, of course, uh, submitted by Zimperium Labs. Now, we discussed about Zimperium and Adam uh, Donenfield, and if you didn't see that video, it's in the description down below. He said publicly that he is going to release an exploit for the iOS 10.3.1 and lower, for of course, um, for of course the older devices on 64-bit, including the iPhone 7, on the summer on a conference, of course, held by uh, Zimperium. Well, as, as you can see, a lot of them are in here. In fact, there are eight at number, and all of them are kernel exploits in the AVE video encoder. Now, the next thing that we have in here is the core audio. We discussed about it in core foundation. Then you have the uh, foundation in here. Well, this were discovered by Jan Beer of Google Project Zero. And then you have iBooks. Now, this is a pretty hefty one. Uh, the iBooks application here, pretty much some of you use it, some of you do not. Um, it pretty much has the, you know, feature is that you can open um, iBooks or PDF files and you can actually get them. You have charts in here that you can get um, books and so on. Now, the bug itself was something like you get a uh, maliciously crafted uh, file and you install it in your iBooks in here and try to read it But when you open it it can infect the device and of course URLs will start popping up of your um, Safari so the uh, bug had the ability to actually let a um, an attacker to open various links um, randomly on your device which is a pretty hefty one in my opinion and it was fixed and it's another one in here and that was uh, addressed. And then the IO surface and other components like the kernel itself. Now it says the erase condition was addressed for of improved locking. Now uh, a lot of kernel exploits were patched and also the notifications bug or if you want to say it's a bug it was actually something that was already fixed in the new APIs and it was available in the old APIs uh, and basically it was a bug that once you send a lot of information, a lot of garbage information from a notification to the device, it would cause the device to respring and kill the uh, springboard temporarily. Nothing very major, but Apple did fix it finally. Then we have uh, a couple of bugs in Safari, and those are WebKit related issues and were patched as well. Now keep in mind these uh, security uh, improvements were available for iPhone 5 and later, so 32-bit devices like this one I'm running currently still get that, uh, that update as well. Now we're very close to the iOS 11, which means that we're not going to probably see iOS 10.3.4 or iOS 10.4 or something related. We're probably going to jump directly into the iOS uh, 11 beta. But Apple is currently, of course, focusing on that and um, it really makes sense to focus on, on iOS 11 considering the fact that it has to be presented at WWDC, which is going to be held next month. So we should probably uh, not be worried about new betas or new iOS versions after iOS 10.3.3 that is currently in beta 1. Now, speaking about important things and speaking about security, uh, if you are, of course, not caring about your um, your jailbreak or you do not care about anything that happens with the uh, jailbreak community, you just want to keep your device up to date, then I do recommend to get iOS 10.3.2. Now, the battery improvement is somehow visible. I, I do see a little bit of improvement in the battery-related side, but, you know, these battery improvements are really hard to tell because 
each device has its own battery with its own uh, num number of cycles and the more cycles you have on your battery the less it's going to hold up and it doesn't really matter what iOS version you have if your battery is pretty much old it's going to simply not hold charge anymore properly so it's really hard to tell whether the battery is improved or not but I didn't see that much of a drop so it's definitely holding up correctly on this um, iPhone 5 which is definitely an old device and it's, it has been used pretty well in the past Anyways, uh, you can actually update, as I said, if you're not interested in the jailbreak, but you are interested in all these security fixes, because there are quite a few in there. But if you're interested in a jailbreak, do not update your device past iOS 10.3.1, because we've been talking about the um, this thing. I made a video in here uh, when Pango has demoed an iOS 10.3.1 jailbreak, but again, it was only demoed, not released. But we also have a couple news about, as I said, uh, that, that security researcher, Adam, who said he's going to release a, um, an exploit, a powerful uh, kernel exploit for privilege escalation in, in the summer. That is compatible with iOS 10.3.1 and 10.2 as far as I know. So it's also going to be compatible with iPhone 7. If you're interested in iOS 10.3.1, go and update to it if you're on 10.2.1. But if you're already jailbroken on iOS 10.2, do not update to 10.3.1 either. And let alone iOS 10.3.2. You should not be updating to 10.3.2 at all if you're interested into the jailbreaking. Now, speaking about features, there's, as I said, nothing new. There's no new feature, no new emojis, no new wallpapers into it for the, uh, for the iPhone version. Just a couple of... Um, bug fixes the device works i mean it does have that you know feeling that it works but on a 32-bit device it does seem to work pretty slow you do feel the uh, the lag when you're switching uh, from the, the things where when you open applications it does load slower than it used to do on ios 9 or ios 9.3.5 so Refrain from updating from updating to to iOS 10.3.3 or 10.3.2 if you're on uh, a 32 bit device because it does get a little bit slower by the time. So this is actually it, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Till the next time, if you want more updates, subscribe to stay updated. Give this video a thumb up. Tell me in the comment section down below which iOS version you're running currently and how it's uh, running in terms of battery. And peace out.